Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. I am very excited about this episode today. We have a lot to cover, a lot of things going on in the market. Uh, lots of panic here, huge amount of concern amongst investors. And there's so much going on underneath the surface. It's going to be tough to cover in just one video, but I'm going to try my best to. Now, just as a quick background, anybody who's been following this channel for some time knows that we are very well aware of the long term risk in the equity markets. Just this chart represents that very well. This is the real earnings yield of the S&P 500. So real means inflation adjusted. So when you adjust earnings for inflation, it basically tells you how attractive it is to buy the S&P 500 at current levels. And when you see the real earnings yield dip below zero, right? This is the zero line. So it goes into negative territory. It creates a recession. It creates a bear market even in the S&P 500, right? All of these red circles have corresponded to lots of volatility in the financial markets, the 1907 panic, World War One. Then we get into the Great Depression. This is 1937 right here. Big 50% bear market. That's pretty much the same bear market as World War II. Then you've got the bear markets of the 70s. This was the 1974 top. Then the uh, 80s volatility with Volcker that was tightening into recessions. Back here in this zone, inflation numbers were extremely high and the market was going down. The market got absolutely destroyed in real terms. Then you've got the top of the dot-com bubble, the top of the uh, great financial crisis before the great financial crisis, and then you've got 2022. 100% of the time, this signal triggers bear markets on the S&P 500. So we know that we are heading for a major repricing of the stock market somewhere in the next year or two. A lot of the red flags that we've been looking at to tell us uh, what long term stock market returns are going to be a lot of these indicators have been showing some red flags. So the question is, have we already started that bear market? Was that the top of the bull run that we're not going to see again for years to come? Or are there still fundamental driving factors that could drive the stock market rally a lot higher before we get that top. That's what we try and do in these videos. We bring you guys all the data, all the research that we make and put it out for free for you guys to enjoy. If you're interested in following these crazy markets with us, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Of course, don't forget to click on that like button as well if you enjoy this video. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so I want to start off by quickly talking about this line here that was broken on the daily time frame, right? We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens towards the end of the week. But when I look at these multi-year trend lines, I'm really looking at that weekly close. A weekly close under it, that's bad news from a short-term technical standpoint. But that's not what I want to do here. Uh, what I want to do is take a look at the RSI on this chart. And we're going to take a look at the four hour chart because we've had a pretty violent downtrend here and nothing goes straight down. Nothing goes straight down on a line. You can think you're in a bear market. You can disagree with us. That's absolutely fine. But there is such thing as an oversold short term reading. And what we had here, right? First of all, Jerome Powell spoke here. Market went on an absolute tank here and it triggered this signal on the RSI, this oversold technical signal here. And you can see just quickly looking back, it's only happened a handful of times, obviously. During this uptrend, it corresponds to big bottoms on the S&P 500. You can see that systematically right here. But what we've had since that reading, you can see let me zoom in a little bit more. And this is short term stuff, right? I don't like putting out too much short term trading content, but I feel like that's needed in the context of the size 
and the volatility of the move that we saw throughout the past few days. So we're gonna move on in just a second, but I wanna quickly show you this here, this lower low on the price following this RSI reading that's extremely oversold and this higher low on the RSI here, right? So divergence between the momentum and the price in the short term. I look at that and I say, all right, we're getting close to the bottom here. Unless there's some big black swan event, this is gonna lead to a short-term rally. And I'm gonna show you a few examples of that. First of all, this is an example where we had a lower low on the price and a higher low on the RSI, led to a nice rally. If we zoom out a little bit more, we don't have any divergence here until we get to October right here. Huge, huge move down. You can see it, in fact, it looks a little bit similar to what we had here type of bullish flag here. A lot of people were looking at that for a breakout and it actually broke down and accelerated to the downside before triggering this oversold RSI reading and then continuing to diverge in the days to come, eventually leading to a big bottom at support. That's another point. Just seeing this type of development with no support under it, you know, that's not the same as when you see this type of short-term development when getting near a very important level of support. And let me get back to 2022. What are we doing here? We're seeing this RSI divergence build while getting to pretty much the ultimate level of support, which is this low, March low. So this is constructive for the short term. Now let me get back to one of the most concerning charts that we've covered over the past few months, and that is the defensive sector divided by the S&P 500. We've had consumer staples, which are generally seen to be very defensive. We saw them break out of this pattern here, this head and shoulder pattern. And this is something that we talked about in one of our articles back here towards the end of March. We were looking at this and we said that if we break out, that's a bad signal. If we break out above this line of, of resistance, it begins to look bad in the short term for the S&P 500. Now we did have that breakout and it's a head and shoulder pattern. So that's pretty concerning because we talked about it last time. The measured target of a head and shoulder is the height of the head and you take that same measurement and you take it out from the break of the trend line. That is how they work and they are very, very high probability trades once they break. So we've had that break. Nothing's a guarantee, but it's very likely we'll be heading to here. Now, why is that concerning? Let me actually put this into uh, context. I'm gonna put the correlation coefficient between this ratio and the S&P 500. And it shows you that the correlation is negative. It's below that zero line. So as a general rule of thumb, it's not perfect, but as a general rule, you can say that when this is going up, when this ratio is going up, the S&P 500 is going down. So that is concerning if you're expecting this ratio to go all the way up to this zone here. But I do wanna remind you that this can happen a number of ways. It doesn't mean that the ratio is gonna go straight up into this zone and the market is just going to crash immediately, right? If we have, if we have this type of price action, right? Let's say, for example, we have this type of price action. We have a little bit more volatility in the coming days. And then we have this move back down here to retest that neckline before we ultimately get into that big volatile move towards the end of the year. So I'm not, this is not a prediction. This is just to keep your mind open to different scenarios. And in that case, that would mean we could see a recovery for 175 days. In my opinion, based on the research that we've made, we think it's gonna take us at the very least back to the all-time high. I wanted to show you something that we talked about in the article that we posted at the beginning of the week. We took a look at the VIX here, uh, the VIX that had bounced off this trend line here. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But most importantly, we have this trend line here that goes from the top of the COVID spike, right? This is the, the volatility index of the S&P 500. So when you have this, big spike in volatility. That's when the market is crashing and that's the COVID low. And so this is the volatility here. These spikes are the volatility that we saw towards the beginning of the year. And you can see we have this nice 
downtrend line that could potentially act as an area of resistance. And I'm gonna show you why uh, that works. It worked between 2018 and uh, 2020. You have this nice trend line that captures all the big volatility spikes. Now this was towards the beginning of the week and you can see we weren't quite there yet. We weren't quite at that VIX trend line uh, resistance if we press the play button on this chart, and let me zoom in a little bit, you can see we tag that trend line perfectly. And so the risk reward on the S&P 500 is really starting to shift dramatically here. Very, very different to what we had uh, right here at the uh, towards the end of March. And by the way, this is why we have the website. We made this service so that we could give you guys frequent market overviews on everything that we're looking at, all the indicators, all the developments that are important to us, and most importantly, how to find the proper risk reward in the market. Because you can be bullish on the market, have a macro bullish thesis, that's great, but if you can't use tools to time it properly, you're going to get left behind. The VIX is now at very elevated levels, meaning we have wild moves on the S&P 500 and that often leads to the biggest trading opportunity. So we look at these types of charts to evaluate that risk reward. And we're gonna be doing that very frequently and doing that very, very meticulously over the next few weeks as we see that volatility play out and we try and identify those levels and those opportunities in the market, right? That's why on the 31st of March, as we had that massive rally on the S&P 500, we took a look at the VIX and it was at support, right? So you don't buy at support, you buy when the VIX is at resistance. Here this chart was really telling you that volatility was at a higher probability of expanding again and seeing a pullback on the S&P 500. And that's why since the end of March, our rating on the S&P 500 our short-term rating on the S&P 500 has been a hold. Now the pullback was definitely a lot more aggressive than what we were anticipating. There was definitely a lot more volatility. That's why we use these kinds of tools like the VIX, like sentiment, like put call ratios, intermarket analysis, all of the things that we look at to give ourselves the best odds. So that's what I mean when I say that the risk reward here is changing. It's shifting very rapidly on the S&P 500. We're gonna be changing our short-term rating on the S&P 500. And in fact, all the sectors and assets that we look at, we're gonna be changing them this week. If you wanna have access to this kind of research that really gives you an edge over other traders in the market and gives you that additional insight to navigate the market, make sure to go to gameoftrades.net. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. It really does help uh, push our videos out to a wider audience and push the effort and time uh, that we put into putting out this research. Uh, it, it, it helps push it out. So it is really appreciated. In the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.